بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر ہوریا عامر ہیڈ آف فزیولوجی ڈپارٹمنٹ فیصل آباد میڈیکل یونیورسٹی ناؤ ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ایز وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ دی ٹاپک وچ از ایکچولی کنٹرولنگ دی فائن فنکشنز آف دا برین اینڈ دیٹ از دی لمبک سسٹم نو واٹ از دس ٹرم لمبک سسٹم ایز پریویسلی آئی ہیو جسٹ outlined it what it is so we have to know that the limbic system is said to be the border structures around the basal region now this uh, limbic system is consisting of limbic cortex as well as the associated deep structures let's talk about them in detail now what is limbic cortex Now the limbic cortex is composed of a ring of cerebral cortex in each side of the brain beginning in the orbitofrontal area on the ventral surface of the frontal lobes extending upward into the subcalosal gyrus then over the top of corpus callosum onto the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere in the cingulate gyrus passing behind the corpus callosum and downward onto the ventromedial surface of the temporal lobe to the parahippocampal gyrus and uncus so this is actually the anatomical composition of limbic cortex you can see that it is consisting limbic cortex is consisting of a ring of cortical tissue around the hilus of cerebral hemisphere it is consisting of orbitofrontal cortex subcalosal gyrus cingulate gyrus parahippocampal gyrus and uncus so it is actually making the border of the base of the brain the associated deep structures you all should be knowing about them they are septum area para olfactory area anterior nuclei of thalamus thalamus hypothalamus amygdala the portions of basal ganglia and hippocampus these are the associated deep structures of Now when we are talking about it we should be knowing about the functions of limbic system what is it as it is controlling the uh a sort of uh, complex sort of feelings the feeling of punishment reward behavior everything that is actually being controlled by it so the functions they can be included like olfaction the control of emotions and behavior the control of food intake water intake body weight the control of sexual functions it is involved in the recent memory the body temperature regulation and the reg- now let's talk about the important portions of the limbic system with the first one which is the large one that is the hypothalamus now this is frequently asked and it is very important as uh, we know that uh it is having the function of uh, brain as well as it is function to release the endocrine uh, hormones as well so physiologically it is the most important portion of the limbic system now it is the part of diencephalon it is present below hypothalamic sulcus it forms anterior inferior wall and the floor of third ventricle it is divided into three portions in what are they they are anterior lateral and posterior hypothalamus despite of its small size of only just few cubic centimeters it has two way communicating pathways with all levels of the limbic system in turn the hypothalamus and its closely allied structures send output 
Now, what are these uh, three directions? They are backward and downward to brainstem, mainly into the reticular areas of the mesencephalon, pons, and medulla, and from these areas into the peripheral nerves of autonomic nervous system. Now, upward towards many higher areas of die and cephalon and cerebrum, especially to the anterior thalamus and limbic portions of the cerebral cortex, into the hypothalamic infundibulum to control or partially control most of the secretory functions of both the posterior and the interior pituitary. Let's talk about the nuclei of hypothalamus. You all are supposed to draw and label them. Now, there is presence of four groups of nuclei. There is presence of preoptic group and supraoptic group. Now, preoptic ones, they are medial preoptic nucleus and lateral preoptic nucleus. Then there is presence of supraoptic group. There is the suprachiasmatic nucleus, supraoptic nucleus, paraventricular nucleus and anterior nucleus. Now what is it? It is ventromedial nucleus, dorsomedial nucleus, arcuate nucleus, posterior nucleus and lateral nucleus. Then there is presence of the mammillary group which is important for the feeding reflexes. There is presence of premammillary nuclei, supramammillary nuclei, lateral uh, mammillary nuclei and the medial. Uh, now you are supposed to draw and label the diagram of hypothalamic nuclei along with the function of uh, along with their function. Now the functions of hypothalamus. Let's talk about them broadly because we have done them in detail according to different uh, systems in which they have their function. So if we want to enumerate the functions, there is control of autonomic nervous system and cardiovascular system. There is regulation of water balance of the body. There is regulation of feeding. There is control of uterine contraction and milk ejection. There is control of anterior pituitary secretion. There is control of temperature regulation. There is control of behavior and emotions. So these are quite uh, functions which we are going to learn in uh, different systems in detail. But this is just a, a sort of enumeration of different functions done by the hypothalamus. So how it is actually controlling the autonomic nervous system and cardiovascular system. Now, stimulation of the preoptic area of anterior hypothalamus, it leads to the activation of parasympathetic response, which results into bradycardia, uh, hypotension, pupil constriction, GIT motility, and secretion and contraction of urinary bladder. So their function is the parasympathetic overactivity or response. Then the stimulation of posterior and lateral hypothalamus leads to the sympathetic response. What is that? That is the tachycardia, hypertension, sweating, piloerection, hypoglycemia, pupillary dilatation, secretion of catecholamine. Now regulation of water balance. The hypothalamus regulates body water in two ways. By creating the sensation of thirst which drives the animal or person to seek for water. By controlling the excretion of water into the urine. An area called the thirst center is located in the lateral hypothalamus. When the fluid electrolytes in either the center or closely allied areas become too concentrated, the animal develops an intense desire to drink water and it will search out the nearest source of water and drink enough to return the electrolyte concentration of the thirst center to normal. 
the control of renal excretion of water is vested mainly upon the supraoptic nuclei when the body fluids they become too concentrated the neurons of these areas they become stimulated the nerve fibers from these neurons project downward via infundibulum of the hypothalamus into the posterior pituitary gland where the nerve endings they secrete the hormone known as vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone this hormone is then absorbed into the blood and is transported to kidneys where is it is going to act on the collecting ducts of the kidneys so that more and more reabsorption of water is done and concentrated urine is uh, excreted so this decreases the loss of water into urine but allows the continuing excretion of electrolytes thus decreasing the concentration of body fluids back towards normal now the control of uterine contraction the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus is going to release the oxytocin and is going to transport by the transporting proteins neurofiasin to the posterior pituitary now oxytocin is released in response to appropriate stimulus and it causes the uterine contraction now very high levels they are achieved regarding the contractions in the second stage of labor which is going to have the positive feedback mechanism one is increasing the next one is increasing the next and ultimately the childbirth is going to take place then comes the control of milk ejection baby suckles the mother's breast and the receptors along the nipples they are stimulated now impulses they go along the afferent fibers to hypothalamus there is release of oxytocin from posterior pituitary into the blood and is going to reach via blood to the breast tissue now contraction of the myoepithelial cells which are surrounding the alveoli and the ducts occurs and the milk that is squeezed out to the nipple into the body's uh, baby's mouth now within 30 second to 1 minute of start of suckling the milk flow starts from the nipple control of feeding in lateral hypothalamus there is feeding or hunger center when it is stimulated there is desire to eat now feeding center is controlled by the satiety center which is lying just um, adjacent to it that is the ventral medial nucleus of the hypothalamus activity of satiety center depends on its glucose utilization cells in satiety center they are called glucostat cells when the glucose utilization of satiety center is adequate feeding center remains inhibited glucose uptake and utilization in satiety center is insulin dependent in brain cells insulin is not required in diabetes mellitus what happen is that there is polyphagia although there is hyperglycemia but glucostat cells in the satiety center they cannot utilize glucose due to insulin deficiency activity of satiety center decreases the activity of feeding center increases and polyphagia occurs polyphagia is increase uptake of food now mammillary bodies in the hypothalamus they may influence the feeding reflex now what will happen if there is some pathology in the hypothalamus if there is bilateral lesion in the lateral hypothalamus it causes the loss of desire for food and lethal starvation can occur if there is bilateral lesion of the ventral medial areas of hypothalamus the person cannot be satiated and the hunger center is over activated and with voracious appetite that is there and results in tremendous obesity now in the next lecture we are going to learn about how the control of anterior pituitary secretions they take place so still then uh, till then uh, all of you are supposed to make the beautiful diagram of hypothalamic uh, nuclei and their functions and uh, learn about the limbic system um, 
composition. So stay blessed and all the best. Allah Hafiz.